Hi, in this video today, I'm going to be talking about why does your myopia lens prescription increase every six months to every year? And it's going to be sort of interesting, a little bit different setting today. But before I jump into that, let's talk about how you can connect with us. If you're local, call us at 618-288-1489. If you're not local, that's okay. Go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. You can take a quiz, you can read success stories, you can read about what we do in our clinic, and you can schedule a consultation. Okay, so why does your lens prescription increase if you're myopic all the time? Uh, this is a question that I get asked on a frequent basis. I probably say at least once a week, maybe even more than that. But there are several reasons why. One of the reasons why is, especially for children, they're wearing their distance lens prescription all the time. Oh, oh my gosh, I know, but that's what the doctor told me to do. Well, they're wrong. <laughs> okay, you should be wearing your distance lens prescription for distance things. You should be wearing a near lens prescription for near things. Those two prescriptions are not the same. If you're wearing your minus six, because that's what you need to see clear to see the chalkboard or dry erase board or smart board or whatever it is, <laughs> then that's not the same power that you need for up close. The reason why is that we have a focusing system. It's called accommodation. And when we're accommodating or focusing up close, we need a different level of power in front of our eyes. Wearing our minus six that's set for distance for up close is actually going to be detrimental and long-term cause us to increase, 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 increase. I think you get the idea. Now, one of the other things and reasons why our myopia lens prescription increases all the time is something that I dearly love to do. It was the thing that got me into trouble though for my lens prescription when I was young, which is I am an avid reader. And so in the, I can think of like in the summertime, I, it would be nothing for me to go through a 100, 200 page book and read it all in one day. And while I love reading, and while we promote wanting kids to be able to read and do that really well, reading hours and hours and hours on end makes our focusing system or that accommodative system that I talked about just a minute ago, it makes it lock in almost like the muscles get tight and bound up to where they can't release. So when we go to look at something at distance, it's like, wow, that's blurry. <laughs> and that's because we've been locked in and focused up close for such a long period of time. So it's really key and super important that kids and adults take breaks from what they're doing up close. Sort of hard to do if you're an adult. I think about my time in front of the computer and on the phone daily, and it's way more than what I would really like to admit or even like to have in my life. But sort of as a necessary evil as you get older. But for kids, this is definitely something that you can control and manage. Make sure that they take frequent breaks if they're doing lots of reading at home or lots of studying. And if it's on the weekend, make sure that they go do something that's outside if they can. You know, look out a window, go play outside, do something that's distance related. Don't go from a computer to a book or a book to a computer. That's really not changing what level of distance you're working at. It's still kind of keeping that visual system locked in in a focused state. <sighs> All right, let's talk about the third reason why myopia tends to increase, increase, increase. We've already hit the biggest two, but here's what's interesting. <clears throat> when you do an eye exam, you use this machine right here called a foropter. And as the person sits behind it, there's an interesting phenomenon that occurs that most doctors don't even think about or account for, which is that for some people, because of their focusing system liking to lock in a lot, you know, picture those kids who are reading their books all the time. For me, I was under my covers with a flashlight. So bad, don't do that. But here's what happens. When you sit behind this foropter, your brain and your focusing system or accommodative system likes to lock in. A lot of times you're sitting in the dark, and so the room that you're sitting in for the eye exam is darkened down anyway, and then your focusing system wants to focus on something, and so it will start to lock in. 
But even if you're black back behind this black machine here, or if it happens to be white or gray or whatever color it happens to be, silver, then you are locked in on whatever's in front of your face. The focusing system has this ability to key into that. So this can actually cause your lens prescription to change a little bit. And while most doctors don't really think that that's the case, I have seen it so many times over the years happen, that we will get a false reading for someone and it will look like they're a little bit more nearsighted than the, what they really truly are. And it's kind of, it throws things off a little bit. The other thing that's really interesting is if the doctor uses a machine that is called an autorefractor, where you sit behind it and you look at a specific target and it takes a measurement from your eyes. And this auto refractor may measure your level of myopia to be higher. Well, that has to do with where you're focusing and where attention span is located. If you happen to look off to the side, you're going to increase your astigmatism. If you happen to sit there and defocus or lock in differently based on where you're at, you will see an increase or decrease in your power. So it's important to realize that this machinery even though it's great, it's needed, it's exactly what I do, I account for and look at how the focusing system works in front of it and outside of it because it is different and I get different numbers. So it makes a huge difference. We don't want to make, you know, make our patients increase in their myopia. I think it happens enough as it is. It's common for me to see kids jump anywhere from um, about 0.75 to like 1.25 in a year, which is crazy. Go back through the things I told you in this video and see, okay, are these things, is this something that we need to adjust or account for? And maybe this is why my child's prescriptions increasing all the time. Now we do actively work to decrease lens prescriptions for our patients and we are super successful at it. Hallelujah. So, so if you are wondering, well, how could we maybe potentially work on decreasing our lens prescription now that we're aware of all the things that can kind of go wrong, how can we decrease it because we're already a little out of control? Well, that's where you can contact us, 618-288-1489 or go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com and schedule a consultation with us. We can consult with you about what we can do about that. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any notifications of videos that I put out. And also, if you feel like, hey, this is new stuff I've never even thought of before and you wanna pass it on to your maybe you are kids who have your grandkids, or maybe it's a neighbor or friend, then please feel free to pass this video on. Thank you. Add in. <laughs> okay, I'm adding two things to talk about to the video that you were previously watching because I watched it and I thought, I didn't mention that and it's important. So the other thing that happens when you're back behind this foropter, this machine, is that some people, some kids, will experience what's called dark myopia or um, it's like a dark focus and it occurs for people who are myopic or maybe even not myopic at nighttime when they're driving and they're like, man, I can't see things as clearly down the road as what I normally can. So that dark myopia or a dark focus kicks in whenever you're behind this dark machine and it's blocking light. And then if you're in a room that's really dim because the eye doctors dimmed the lights down. So kids will actually show an increase in myopia from that dark focus occurring. A second thing that also induces back behind this machine, which is important to note, is that it also kicks the accommodative or, accommodative or focusing system in sometimes too much, too well for some people, and it makes them have what's called an esophoria. Now, an esophoria is like a position of the eyes where the eyes started to cross in. In cases of children who have strabismus, 
specifically who have esotropia, where they're already crossing their eyes in, they will for sure show more myopia when they sit back behind this machine. But even patients who don't normally exhibit something like an esophoria can be stimulated by the focusing system to lock in a little bit behind here and their eyes will cross a little bit more and then they'll show like a larger jump in their myopia. So moms, dads, this is where you say like, wow, you know, why on earth did they jump from say a minus one to a minus two or a 250 in just six months to a year? What on earth happened? These are two more things to really just be aware of and ask questions when you start to see that lens prescription change and say like, wow, why on earth did my child jump that much? This is something that we have to be cautious about when patients come in from other doctors' clinics and we're always looking at like, why on earth did they go from a minus 50, which exhibited one year, and then within two years, they're already up to a minus seven. Whoa, <laughs> something is really off the rails. And again, these are just two more things back behind here that you need to be aware of that could be increasing your child's myopia.